On an October afternoon in 1976, Muhammad Ut, Sayyid Ut's younger brother, arrived late to a conference on Islamic media being held in Riyadh. Despite missing the first two days of the gathering, Ut immediately questioned the terms of the discussion by posing a paradox. Islamic media, he argued, isn't about Islam. Ut criticized his colleagues for being unimaginative when it came to thinking about the possibilities of Islamic media. He worried that Islamists were becoming, quote, like the communists who made their media one extended lesson on Karl Marx. Why is it that when we think of Islamic media, we think of moral guidance and religious speech, but nothing beyond that? He asked his fellow panelists. Nowadays, when Muslim youth find religious programs on television or on the radio, they turn them off. This has become Islamic media, but why? Kut then pivots the conversation about Islamic media from content to concept. Instead of a narrow vision of Islamic media, Ut asks his colleagues to consider the idea that media can be recognizably Islamic without a single Quranic verse quoted, prophetic saying narrated, or pious pa pra practice exhorted. Islamic media could be Islamic without being about Islam. In my ethnographic fieldwork almost four, four decades later at Iqra, the world's first Islamic television channel, the question of what made media Islamic continued to be debated. By the time Iqra was founded in 1998, Islam was a routine component of everyday mass-mediated sites and sounds across the Arab region. Yet, for Iqra's Cairo producers, as for Qutb and others many years earlier, there was still a sense of Islamic media as they yet to be achieved or even imagined. Islamic media remained unsettlingly uncertain. One way of understanding this instability is as a symptom of new media technology's broader fragmentation of religious authority in the Arab world. Over the past three decades, the region's media landscape has dramatically transformed from a monopoly by state broadcasters to terrestrial television to a competitive sector on satellite, although of course we're now seeing the re-entrenchment of the authoritarian state within, private, uh, within satellite media. But in the, in the, the mid-1990s and early 2000s, the emergence of privately funded Islamic television channels was a much commented upon part of this broader political economic shift. And scholars were usually analyzed these channels as a petrodollar story. Oil boom, ec Gulf economic growth led to a Saudi dominated media empire in the 1990s that included the creation of niche channels, some Islamic. My articles, by contrast, offers a more multifaceted account of the rise of Iqra as the world's first Islamic television channel in which I take seriously the role ideas played alongside changing economic and regulatory structures. While examining the political economy of Islamic media is important for unpacking the rise of non-state religious broadcasting in the Arab world, the rise and demise, we also need an account of how Islamic media as a concept, as a concept in search of different kinds of capital, including but not only financial, how Islamic media as a concept enabled at once new understandings of both Islam and of media. Indeed, treating Islamic media -Islami, as a self-evident and stable category results in a presentism that includes its changing stakes and forms over time. This article excavates the intellectual history of this concept through examining theorizations of Islamic media in Egypt and Saudi Arabia from the 1960s until the founding of the first Islamic ch satellite channel in 1998. And I make the case for taking not the neoliberal 90s as a point of departure, but rather the decolonial 60s. I argue that the emergence of Islamic media as a concept was inextricably bound to aspirations for epistemic emancipation. Epistemic emancipation aimed at clarifying the ways in which Alem media was an Islamic concept, even while being semantically absent from the Quran and the prophetic lexicon. And it was about showing how Islamic media simultaneously was not necessarily about Islam, even as Islam was an inherently idiotic religion or deen Alem. To make this argument, my article focuses on three generations of Arab media scholars whose work is crucial to any conceptual history of Islamic media. The first is Abdul Latif Hamza. 
Hamza was the chair of Cairo University's journalism department in the 50s and one of the Arab world's first professional communication scholars. He was also the first to argue that Islam was a mediatic religion. And he reprised this argument in much more depth with his final book, Media at the Dawn of Islam. Hamza's ideas about how Islam and media made sense of each other might have died with him if it weren't for the institution building of his junior colleague at Cairo University, Ibrahim Imam. Imam would become the dean of Cairo University's faculty of media, and, but he also founded, most importantly, Al-Azhar University's Department of Mass Communication, where he established himself as the leading scholar in Islamic media studies. But Islamic media's intellectual center of gravity began shifting away from Egypt with a new generation of Saudi communication studies scholars, including Abdul Qadir Tosh. Tosh knew Saudi Arabia's most important media investors, including Sheikh Saleh Kamil. And when Saleh established Iqra, the Islamic television channel in 1998, he turned to both Tosh and Imam to lead teams in Jeddah and Cairo, tasked with figuring out what Iqra's Islamic media would be. That this wasn't obvious is important. There were diverse aspirations expressed during these many months of preparation, but one thing held constant. Islamic television channels would not necessarily be limited to being about Islam. Tracing this conceptual history of media in the Arab Academy, looking at how Arab scholars themselves took media seriously on an intellectual level, helps us to grasp the complexities of the stakes involved in the founding of Iqra as the world's first Islamic television channel. Petrodollars are not the whole story. Thank you. <laughs>